So I'm going to talk about the mixing that I did for the amazing Soft Walls album, True Love. So the solo project of Dan Reeves is called Soft Walls, and I've known Dan for a while. I've been a fan of his music that he's been putting out. He's really into the kind of DIY aesthetic and self-records his own music, and yeah, I've always been a big fan. He wanted to make an album that sounded um, the best of all of his albums in terms of the sonic quality. So the brief really that he gave me was to respect the, the not polished sound. This isn't pop music, it's kind of post-punk indie rock. It's, it's not high definition, super slick rock music or pop music. But Dan did want to be a step above his previous um, albums, which all have a lovely, really kind of quite crusty lo-fi quality because they were recorded on a four-track Tascam or in you know, quite crude um, lo-fi ways and I love lo-fi so I was really pleased to be involved in this mixing anyway brilliant bunch of songs I really recommend listening to the album I, it was so fun to work on it Dan was great Dan sent me the logic projects with some mixed notes everything was organized it was fantastic Dan also did give me permission to sort of do additional production it was it was a mixing plus some additional production brief really so that's great because I could I could have a little bit more freedom to add stuff and augment what was already there in the stems that he sent over. But so the first single that he put out was called True Love. It's done really well um, and I wanted to kind of look at a few things I did in this mix that I think are worth sharing, that are quite interesting. Um, so a quick blast of this verse of the song. <laughs> And I'm going to solo the main vocal that was sent through. I'm ready, perfect luck, found a way. And there's a delay vocal. True love. There's a reamped vocal here, which was. Come on, up. I'm ready, perfect luck. So I think Dan had sent the the main vocal out through some guitar effects pedals or something like that. So my goal really was to make those vocals a bit deeper in terms of depth in the mix. So when you're listening to the song, they, they take up a bit more space sonically. For me, it was finding space both in terms of the EQ and the tone, as well as also the width of the vocal. This is the main um, vocal that we've already heard. It's got an effect on it. I didn't apply this effect. Come on so that's what was sent to me. And then I've layered that first with a del with another channel, which is a duplicate of this, and I've added the dirty tape. It's, good. Come on. it's got a stereo phasing type thing going on. I've compressed it quite a lot, and then EQ'd out a couple of the maybe the it's SC good. type frequencies or the harsh Come frequencies, on. and then put that with the vocal. It's good. Come on. And suddenly the one that's not affected and the one that has the tape effect of kind of moving with each other and or moving against each other I should say to create more of a chorusy effect. So that's an effect layer. The high vocal, we've got the dry. Yeah. Come on. That's the original. And then I've layered on a um, extra a duplicate of that. And this time I've added an alter boy on to make it an octave higher. This is the Sound Toys Alter Boy. So this was to create that extra harmonic sound above the vocal. If you listen to them together. And then on that, I've compressed it, EQ'd out the top, the top end. And I put a really cool reverb called Realm on there, which is a massive sort of sounding reverb. And then again, after that, I've, I've basically EQ'd out some of the high end, um, the SE harsh frequencies to make it soft. So that's in there, and those those four together. Come on I'm ready. And then yeah, then the reamped one that um, was sent through sounded like this. Come on a, I think that's got more effects that Dan had put on the. So then I've actually taken that track. EQ'd out some of the kind of boomy frequencies, the low mids. I put a cassette plug in on it, which I really love, and I've used a clean tape mode. I put the spread up, and really what this is just doing is just imparting a little bit of a saturation effect on it. And then I'm putting the decapitator on, which is another saturator. 
So I really wanted to position this vocal reamped bit as a bit of a tonal saturated layer. So yeah, that's the, that's so far just all of the um, the vocals with effects added. And then I used my I've got this really cool vintage 1980s. A multi effects unit called a, a, it's a Yamaha Rex 50 or REX 50. And like they were like state of the art when they came out in the 80s, but now you can get them for 50 quid. And it's really fun. I use it a lot because it's quite odd and it's, it's got a sort of certain vintage digital aesthetic to it, which I really like. And so what I've done there is I've basically, basically sent out the vocal through the Rex 50 using different presets and then putting it back into the into Logic Session. I've done that three times. So the first I've used is the Stereophonic, which is a really kind of a weird stereo chorus widening type effect. This is that. Come on up, I'm ready. And this is on the high vocal. And then I've done a phaser. Come on up, I'm ready. And then I've done a, on top of that, I've done a flanger. And then all of these have got different EQs going on to sort of help them slot together. But really, it's all about just making it sound a bit mad and um, making it sound spacey, sort of psychedelic, just layering and building and making that vocal just sound big. So if you play all the vocals together, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. it's like 10 layers, it's insane. And then if you play together. So yeah, that's the vocals. I'm going to mute those now and we're going to look on to quickly look at the drums. So I didn't do a whole lot of processing on the drums really. I, I used the stereo stem that was sent to me, which sounded brilliant. And I've just done some EQ, carving out a little bit of the low end, controlling maybe the, controlling the snare a little bit, the boom minutes of the snare with the dynamic reverb at 200 hertz. And then boosting some of the cymbal snare kind of frequencies. Subtle bit of saturation which is always kind of a good thing on drums. And then this effects send, which is us number 17, and it's going to an Echo Boy. And the Echo Boy is doing that. Dirty, wide slapback delay. The saturation input is basically adding lots of energy to the left and right because the guitars are there. But the guitars are like left and right and the drums are just in the middle. So I wanted to kind of unify them and, and this is quite quiet in the mix, but it just gels the guitars and the drums a little bit more together. Without this, the drums still sounded good, but they just sounded a bit smaller and not quite as impactful. There's a hi-hat on top of there. And then, yeah, this is some other bits, but really that's the drums. Keep it kept it simple. Bass, sounded pretty cool. I duplicated the bass and then I've um, auto filtered it out all the way down. So I've cut off all the high ends. So you're just getting this almost like subby kind of thing. And I put a bark of dog on, which is basically a boost compression saturator, adding harmonics in there. And then when you add that, that just helped the bass to be a bit more bassy, basically. I, rather than just over boosting the bass frequencies in the actual track, I, I duplicated it. I mean, it's going to a track spacer, so the track spacer is um, basically pulling out the frequencies of the drums a little bit, so the, the drums and the bass help uh, can live together a bit better. Cool! So, I'm going to quickly look at the guitars. Here's the guitars together. And so, main guitar. This is what it sounded like when it came through without the um, processing. So it's kind of right in the middle. And so I wanted to change that. So I used the Haas effect using the sample delay. And that's where you use the milliseconds here and you just nudge one of the guitar, one of the channels between like 15 and 20 something milliseconds. It creates the psychoacoustic effect of there being width and a guitar coming from around you. And then on the gain, I've, I've flipped the phase on one side. Without that, it sounds... And that was helping it to exist when you put it into mono. And then saturation at the end, just a light amount of saturation. 
And then there's a break in the song where the, the sample delay, the Haas effect with widening thing comes on. So it goes, goes solo. Just for this bit. And then back to being wide for the guitar solo. And then the verb guitar, which is this kind of really nice like tremolo thing. EQ and then it's being sent to the black hole reverb by Eventide. Massive reverb. And it's EQ'd in such a way that makes it feel like it's very much in the background, quite far away. Just allows those dry guitars to be dry up front and then have a bit more uh, depth to the mix. And then a hard pan. Spring reverb guitar. And that is just to add space. The guitar solo is where it's all happening though, I love it, it's great. I mean, it was sent through two, I think two layers? It's just everything together. It's a great solo. Basically, Dan's guitars were this, together. One dry which I've panned a bit, and one which is kind of more... Reverb, yes. And probably a little bit slap back delay. And then, I, so I've duplicated that and I've put an octave down on it, so I think probably using, probably using Little Auto Boy, and then that's panned. So it's panned the other side to the, um, the dry guitar, creating left and right. I love how that sounds. And then finally, I did this other layer, which has got a panning left and right using a plugin called Panflow, I think, which you, you tell it how much, what the pan pattern you want it to be. It's not just doing straight left and right. It's kind of doing all sorts of things. And then I've added a vibrato, so a slight pitch vibrato. And what that means is when the, you've got that in the mix, so when it's played alongside the same information that's not pitching, it gets a, a chorus effect. And then the panning is modulating like this. So it's just movement, basically. You can hear it. And then in the mix. Without it. Yeah, big fan of that. Great solo. Really didn't do much to, to it in terms of sort of tonal stuff. I'd like it, it came through sounding great and I just respected that and kept it as is. Keyboards, similar thing with the keyboards. Dan had recorded the um, keyboards himself and, you know, using a Logic instrument like that. A lot of the things I've done with this track are about space and widening and deepening stuff and helping things to move and be a bit richer sonically. So. With that in mind, with the keyboard, I added the Dirty Tape plugin, which is again moving, allowing the sound to just have a slight stereo left and right movement, rather than being just sort of dry in one place. Pan flow in action, you see that pan curve. Then reverb, plate reverb, which is a uh, Archeria plate. quite dreamy and it's set to a small plate. So that's the main one and then I basically layered it up. I had the MIDI so I found some other sounds that were lower down. This is one. And then this is the other. Giving them slightly different positions in the stereo field again. So when they play all the keys together, they combine to this. What you're hearing, your perception is that that's one instrument that it's one instrument with different tones and different stereo information, when actually, you know, it's three instruments. The keyboards didn't really want to be like super powerful up front. They're more, they are more of a layer. And so having that movement and having them in sort of widened and deepened allows them to blend more. So just quickly, I have master bus going like a kind of bus compressor doing very subtle compression, just helping things glue together. Then I've got the Black Box HD2 um, Saturator. This is doing a lot, actually, if you listen to it without it. That's without. That's with. 
adding harmonic richness um, like nothing else can. Ozone, which I'm imagining, oh yeah, it's doing some more EQing and a bit of imaging. Basically broad stroke, subtle tonal EQ. And then the, the, when I run mixes like this, I have the master desk on, but doing no compression. So this is tonal stuff again. This is basically broad stroke EQ. It's not totally essential, but I, it's, a, it's an extra little bit of a control thing at the end of the chain. Cool. Okay, so that's that's True Love by Softwalls. I hope you found something useful in there. I'll probably do some more talking through some of the songs. There's a whole album of amazing tracks, and all of them have got something new and different and sort of fun that I did with the mix and the production. So always want to try and share things and hopefully get inspired by some of that. Take care, guys.